Finis Onis says putting 200 vertical gardens in Hong Kong's Wan Chai district would cut pollution there by 30% or more. City Tree's internet-enabled trees are 4 meters high and made of steel components which are plugged together and filled with individual pots of moss cultures. Bacteria on the surface of the moss attracts particulate matter, or fine dust, and eats it up. The moss then takes its nutrition from it. Solar-powered sensors alert the system to give the plants optimal rainwater and nutrients automatically. The units also gather data about the environment, traffic, and climate conditions, so the city tree ultimately cleans the air, beautifies the city, and collects data. One city tree is as effective in combating air pollution as 275 regular planted trees, but it requires 95% less space and is at least 10 times cheaper. On Friday, a huge sinkhole in central Florida caused more than 200 million gallons of contaminated wastewater from a fertilizer plant to leak into one of the state's main underground sources of drinking water after opening up beneath a storage pond. Although the company Mosaic, which is also the world's largest supplier of phosphate, said that there's absolutely no one at risk, the EPA found that Mosaic improperly handled its facilities, which posed a threat to the environment and human health. Environmental groups said that the damage from the sinkhole could be severe and added to decades of pollution from the phosphorus fertilizer industry. According to a new study by University of Virginia economist Federico Siliberto, the widespread adoption of genetically modified crops has decreased the use of insecticides, but also increased the use of weed-killing herbicides as weeds become more resistant. The economists who led the study used annual data from more than 5,000 soybean and 5,000 maize farmers in the U.S. from 1998 to 2011, far exceeding previous studies that have been limited to one or two years of data. Farmers are having to use additional chemicals and more of them to combat the resistant weeds. Despite the decrease in insecticide use, continued growth in herbicide use poses a significant environmental problem as large doses of the chemicals can harm biodiversity and increase water pollution through runoff, as well as air pollution. Acidified oceans due to rising carbon dioxide levels have been shown to physically impair the brain chemistry of coral reef fish. In other words, climate change is literally driving fish crazy. A Nature magazine study on spiny damselfish exposed to high CO2 levels showed that they repeatedly ignored warning chemical alarms that signal injury to other fish, such as blood. Fish brains go haywire as a side effect of preventing the acidification of their internal organs, which likely affects other marine species too. A coalition of 25 military and national security experts has warned that climate change poses a significant risk to U.S. national security and international security, and should require more attention from the federal government. Warming temperatures and rising seas will increasingly flood military bases and fuel international conflict and mass migration, leading to significant and direct risks to U.S. military readiness, operations, and strategy. Recommendations to the federal government include the creation of a cabinet-level official dedicated to the prioritization of climate change and security issues. In January, the Pentagon even ordered its officials to start incorporating climate change into every major consideration, from weapons testing to preparing troops for war. Thank you for watching. See you next time.